All right, welcome everybody. Today in this video, I'm going to be configuring Call Manager Express. I'm going to do this from scratch as fast as possible. I'm your host, ECB Seth, and let's look at our goals. So I'm going to start from scratch, and I'm going to try to configure two 7975 IP phones. Uh, they're going to call each other, and then one of them is actually going to have the private line automatic ring down, which is in the Cisco CME IP world, it's called a trunk line. And one of those phones is where when I automatically pick up a phone, let's say this phone right here, as soon as I pick it up, it's automatically gonna dial that phone right over there. That is gonna be one of the goals. And then this phone should be able to call that phone, so on and so forth. So uh, another thing that I'm gonna be doing is I want to have a custom background image on each phone again starting from scratch and then I'm gonna put a custom ringtone so I'm gonna do this all at once uh, I'm gonna do this as fast as I can and let's see what happens alright so this is what our topology looks like I have a 2811 uh, ISR router and a 3560 PoE switch with two IP phones and then my laptop is connected to it because it's gonna to have to be in it's going to have to be a TFTP server to get the initial files onto the 2811 router so that, so that it could be a TFTP server for the IP phones. All right. So let's pull up a timer and let's get to it. I'm also going to be playing some copyright free music in the background while I do this. And I'm going to narrate in the meantime as well, but let's, let's do this. All right, let's go. So I'm in the switch. So first thing I need to do is okay, I got two phones. Okay. So First thing I got to do is I got to create the voice VLAN. So I'll just say VLAN 10. Name it uh, voice VLAN. I could create a data VLAN just to so we could daisy chain off of it. Don't really need it, but it'll be part of the config. And then let's create a trunk port. Interface G01, switch port, trunk, in cap, dot one Q, switch port, mode, trunk. Is that all I really need? Uh, interface range F0 slash 1 through 12. Uh, switch port, mode, access, switch port, access, VLAN. 20, switch port, voice, VLAN, 10, voice, VLAN, 10, uh, spanning tree, port fast, I think that's all I need to do on this switch, do a quick show run. I have the two voice VLANs created. Access mode, VLAN 20, VLAN 10, port fast. For basic configs, I think that's all I need for the 3560. I made a trunk port, show interface trunk. Of course, it's not up. Show run interface G01. Switch mode, mode trunk. Okay, all right. Now let's get onto the router where pretty much everything happens. So this switch is connecting to the router via F00. So let's go into that interface G0, F0 slash zero. Uh, let's do a no shut on it. And put an IP address of 
192.168.0.1. No shut. Create. We're going to create sub interfaces and we are going to be doing a router on a stick configuration. So this is what I'm going to be doing, encapsulation.1q10, IP address 10.0.10.1. No shut. And then let's do another one for the data VLAN. Show IP interface brief. Uh, okay. Good. Um, I also have a conf I also have my laptop configured for F01, so I got to put an IP address on that. So config T interface F0 slash one IP address. And my laptop already has an IP address, so it should be able to ping. There we go. No. Good. It's pinging my computer. Make sure I can ping it. Good. All right, I got connectivity there. Okay. I gotta create a DHCP server for these phones and the data VLAN. So config T IP DHCP pool. Um, this will be voice VLAN DHCP. Network 10.0.10.0. The mask. Default router 10.0.10.1 and the option 150 is going to be the router itself. Option 150 is the TFTP server for the phones and that is going to be the router itself. IP DHCP exclude address 10 zero, 0 Okay. Good. Now let's do the data VLAN. DHCP working. I got that going. Okay. Now I think I could actually do the CME. Config T, telephony service, turn on CME services. First thing I'm going to do is my ePhone the maximum e-phones I can have is 42. The max directory number is 144. Um, and then I think I have to do IP source. Source address is going to be for this service is one, is the actual router itself. Um, is that all I need to do? I think so. If 
I create some line numbers right now. So the first directory number is just going to be um, number 1111. Let's create another directory. 2222. Okay, the phones are already doing something. You can see here, look, this phone is registering right now. But there shouldn't be any configs on it. Um, but they are pulling IPs right now. You can see a 10.2 and a 10.10. Okay. So I got the IP phones talking to the call manager. Well, at least the D, yeah. Um, so let's assign them numbers. So e phone one. I gotta get the MAC address. So the one on the left, let me get the MAC real quick. DC EB dot 94 BD dot 581C. E slot is already registered. Cannot change MAC address. Oh, did it already? What is happening here? Why did it do that? Let's go back into it. Let's copy this one then. Button one colon one. Exit, telephony service, create CNF files. Exit, ePhone 2. All right, so I created two phone numbers. I created two phones, which are these two phones right here. Um, so they should be restarting now. Uh, I shouldn't have done that, damn it. Oh well. Um, I could do things like change the, the time on there because time's gonna be synced up with the router. Um, I could also do a a little banner at the bottom but uh, I'm not gonna do that what I want is first of all these two phones to get their phone numbers I'm gonna call then I'm gonna do the extra stuff so that's just what I'm making sure happens right now and this phone right here has 1111 this phone right here has 2222 so they should be able to work hello hello all right cool so I just got these two phones to work. I'm just under 12 minutes, that's good. But now I wanna do the specific configurations here. I want the 2222 phone, when it automatically picks up, I want it to dial 1111. So I have to go into the ePhone DN line, which is two. I'm going to do, it's called a trunk, and do 1111. Exit, go into ePhone 2, and I will just restart that phone. So that phone is just doing a soft start. It's picking up its new config. Now I should pick this up, and it will automatically dial that phone without even dialing any numbers. I hope. And it worked. Good. Hello? All right. So that worked. 
So, let me move this. This right here is done. Check. Now I've got to do the background image and then the custom ringtones. Uh, so, let's start with the background image. Uh, I'm going to have to go to Google for this because I don't know it off the top of my head. So, what I'm going to do is Cisco CME custom. Back. Oh my god, I hit tab. Oh no, stop. Okay, custom background image. <laughs> this is one of my videos that, that I made before, so it's all good. Okay. So when you create these custom background images, they have to be a certain pixel um, length that length and width. So that's what I'm going to be looking at here. As soon as this comes up, I'm going to have to make it into a text file. Well, first of all, let's let's see what's happening. Okay. So the f I got to create two images. One of them is 3020 by 212. And then the small image is going to be there should be a small image. There you go. 80 by 53. So I'm going to put a picture of me and my baby, me and my wife, and I'm going to change those pixel sizes. So I'm just going to use paint. And I'm going to go resize, go pixels, 320 by, what did it say, 212. Bam. We'll save that as a PNG. Put it in my little TFTP folder, and I'm just going to put image underscore big. Now I have to resize it again for the thumbnail. 80 by 53, I believe. Right? 80 by 53. Save. And I'm just going to be putting image. It's my time. All right. Cool. Now that I have that done, let's TFTP this over to the router. I have TFTP server running. I'm just using some SolarWinds TFTP service. I'll keep that right there. So we will say copy TFTP and oh before I do that I have to create a folder. I gotta create some folders here because the default uh, desktop or uh, yeah it's called desktops the XML file that these phones are going to be calling it's going to look at the TFTP server for a certain folder so I have to create those folders in in uh, on, on the router itself so let me do a do flash real quick okay so we're gonna say make directory flash Desktops, 320 by 212 by 12. Okay, and I actually, I, depending on the phones that you have, you may have to create some more. So I'm gonna create two others. It's gonna be 212 by 16 and then should be 216 by 16 but anyways I'm gonna do this again okay Der 
flash. all three of those now I need to push these files to this folder right here those images so I'm going to say copy tftp to flash desktops slash 320 by 212 by 12 10 0 2 and the image is image.png TFTP service is not working. Come on. It doesn't like it. Come on. Was that the reason why? That was it. Fucking firewall. Jeez. Okay. All right. Well, let's get back on the internet. Okay. Now that I got that, now let's do the the big file. What's the file name? Image underscore big. All right, now that I do that, I have to create a XML file that looks like this. Paste it here, call it that. This is the thumbnail, so it's just going to be image. This is the big one image underscore big save as list.xml save let's copy this over So the reason why I'm doing this list XML thing, this is the XML file that the phones are actually going to call or they're going to look up and find out where these images are stored. And I got to paste this in every single directory that a phone could potentially call for. Okay, good. Now if I do a dir flash desktops 320 by 212 by 12. I have these files in there. Okay. Now, now that these files are there on my router, on the call manager router, I have to tell it to be a TFTP server. So you say TFTP server, and then what is the files that are going to be called for? So all three of these files should be called for. And do that for every one of those folders. And then whenever you do this, make sure you update those CNF files. CNF files are the files that are used for the phone. Um, and then we can do a soft start on these phones uh, by just going into each and every one of them and just saying restart. You found one, restart. 
ePhone 2, restart. And then now this should actually have a picture to look at. There it is right there. Hit select. It's requesting it and it's there. Bam. Look at that. It's different. If you can see that. <sighs> Same thing with this one. Good. Okay, good. So that was completed. If I go back, what time are we at? We're at 27 minutes. Jeez, this is longer than I thought. Um, so we did the custom background image. Now we got to do a custom ringtone. So I like doing these. This is what kind of makes your little lab network unique. You personalize it and you can do, you know, whatever you want with it. Um, so custom ringtones. One way to get a ringtone is to go to zedge.com and then just put ringtones or whatever. And you could download any one of these little ringtone snippets. Um, I downloaded Baby Shark. So it's already right here. Now you can't just push an MP3 file to your call manager and expect the phones to start using it. You need to put it into a certain codec and it has to be so many hertz and all that stuff. So this is where, this is where I'm gonna actually go into it. So you have to, to manipulate this, you have to download a music altering software. Um, I'm using Audacity. It's free, you can go ahead and download it. Um, but I'll show you how to, how to do this. Look at my time here. So what we'll do is we'll do open and then we will go to that baby shark file which is in tftp root cme baby shark all right there it is it's about eight and a half nine seconds long okay what we're going to do here since there's a left and right channel we are going to split stereo into mono we'll get one of those tracks we'll change the project hertz to eight thousand uh, we can listen to it real quick. Okay. Then what we'll do, we will export this and we will export the audio. And we are going to change these things. We are going to change it to other compressed files. We're going to change this to raw. And then we're going to change it into ULAW. And then we can just say baby shark. Get rid of that wave. It's going to change it into a raw file, but I'll show you. Just click OK when that happens. Go back into our folder. Now it's baby underscore shark raw. So now what we're going to do is we're going to push that, but we also need to make a another XML file for the phones to call for. So what we do there is we go back here and we go to uh, Cisco CME custom ringtones and one of those videos or one of the things that pops up is actually one of my videos I did but I'm gonna do this all in one So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be copying the text that they have in there, put it into a notepad, change it to an XML file, and then go ahead and um, push it, push it via the call manager. This is real slow because I have two NICs running. The computer doesn't know what to do. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to edit it. And I only have 
one ringtone and the display name is going to be baby shark and then the raw file is baby underscore shark save as I think it's called ring list yeah ring list dot XML okay now I push that to my CME exit uh, copy TFTP to flash and this is going to be ring list dot XML and then uh, baby underscore shark dot raw Okay, did that. Got to make sure that it is a TFTP server for both of them. So flash uh, baby shark and then ring list. Uh, create CNF files. Um, phone one, restart. Phone two, restart, copy that, and then these phones should actually have that ringtone now. It says bad ring list file. All right, so I messed something up. Yep, I already see it, that right there. Save. Copy that back over. So what happened, the phone said there's a bad ring list file, which means that the, the ring list.xml file was wrong in some way. And what I noticed here was that it had two of the um, forward slash rings which it's not supposed to happen so uh, I stopped that and updated the file pushed it to the router and then now it should actually pull it up and it did pull up and and it worked Select that, select that, save, save. Okay, now I think that is it for the basic configurations for Call Manager Express with the with these, uh, with just one switch, two phones, and a 2811 um, ISR router, which has Call Manager Express built in. And if I go back real quick, and let's do a recap of what I did. So I did the DHCP for the voice VLAN. Pretty simple stuff. Just make sure that these phones can get an IP address along with who is the TFTP server. TFTP server is the interface that is on the router. Okay. And uh, this configuration right there was supposed to be used for management purposes, but I didn't put a management IP on the switch, so it's okay. Um, this is the gateway IP for the phones. This is the gateway IP for the uh, data VLANs. If I were to hook up a computer to it, then the computer would have pulled a DHCP. Uh, this is the interface that hooks up to my laptop, which was hosting the initial TFTP files. So that could actually go away. I did the TFTP server commands to make sure that any file that the phones are going to be calling for, the router has to be aware of it. And then the basic 
telephony service um, commands for Call Manager Express. These three commands are pretty much all you need to do. How many phones can this call manager support? How many directory numbers can this call manager support? And what is the source address for the call manager? Okay, call manager is that IP address right there, which is the default gateway for the phones because I'm doing a router on a stick, not nothing too crazy. This is just a directory number right here. Directory number one has the number 1111, which is the phone to my right. Directory number two, which is just a tag, I assigned it number 2222. This is the private line automatic ring down. Those are for like analog phones, but they call it a trunk when it comes to IP. That is what gives the, this is, when I assign that directory number to a phone, this is what makes the phone automatically dial a phone number. It's automatically dialing that one. I didn't even do it, I just picked it up. Okay. Um, then you make a configuration for a phone based on the MAC address. So ePhone 1 with that MAC address gets button. The first button is going to have directory number 1, which is 1111, which is this phone number to my right. Same thing with number 2. ePhone 2 is that MAC address, and it's getting directory number 2 as the first button, and that is actually doing that trunk line right there. Other than that, that, that completes it. Um, this is a very simple but fun lab to do. Uh, I did a lot in roughly 30, 40, or 40 minutes because I had some TFTP issues. Turns out it was a stupid Windows firewall issue. I thought I turned that off. So, but yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. But I uh, hope this was informative for you. Thank you.